you got thrifted. Thrift? I bet you got the ugly shirt what, thrift. What, what can you not afford? It? Real clothes? You can't afford real clothes? 1959. Well, it was indeed in 1959. A dear old friend with whom I had been associated, owned a record company, which was Riverside, sent me a demonstration record of uh, an album he was about to release. And it was a guitar. Have you ever been to a thrift store? What's up everybody? We have nine tips for you guys on how to shop smartly at thrift stores. Personally, I would say that we both know our way around a thrift store. We have gone there multiple times. We have spent countless hours taking public transit just to go thrifting. It's been hellish, let me tell you. But because of that, we have gotten pretty damn good at being able to quickly go through racks and kind of separate the wheat from the chaff. And I also has the credential of working at a thrift store. So yes. you're getting advice from the source. You're getting advice from the, the highest knowledge. A retail worker at a store that sells uh, donated clothing. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like the top of the food chain here in, in the West. <laughs> Tip number one. If it's not perfect, leave it. This can be whether it's about the price, the color, the condition of the piece. If one of the things is off to you, if one of the criteria doesn't really fit what you're looking for, it doesn't go up to your standards, leave it. Thrift stores get so much clothing, like thousands of pounds a day, they have to process. If you're hung up on the color of a garment, or maybe there's a stain, God forbid, never buy anything stained, but... Never. But uh, even so, you know, like a, a stylist to kind of thing, don't worry about it, just leave it because odds are next time you go or, you know, in two or three visits, you'll find something that makes you completely forget about the piece that you were kind of on the fence about and you won't even think about it anymore. And if you have already bought that piece prior to seeing the new one that was like better, you're gonna buy the new one and then you're probably just gonna throw out the old one. Tip number two, don't let the brand blind you. Uh, this is a really important one because I feel like a lot of people when they go to a thrift store they kind of disregard everything Adam said uh, previously about having the clothing being in good condition and just being 100% what you're looking for because it's a brand. So they see like a torn up Calvin Klein shirt and you know it has a stain, it doesn't feel good but they see the Calvin Klein on it and they buy it. It's not worth it. There's no point, you're gonna throw it out. You're not gonna be wearing a dirty shirt just because it has a brand on it in the long run when you see it like versus all of your other uh, clothing in your closet. And that's the only thing that you buy is dirty shirts. And I guess it'd look at them. And the thing is that those pieces will usually be more costly than yeah. everything else. So not only are you buying something that uh, in the long run you won't be wearing or it doesn't even look good on you, you're, you're paying. paying more than what you normally pay for for something else at the thrift store. Yeah, and that they, could potentially look good on you, and it's just the brand that's kind of making you buy that as opposed to something else. It looks better than everything else because it's branded, it's priced higher than everything else, so like, kind of like gets into your head that it's better. It's really not. Tip number three, don't be afraid to come out empty-handed. So we understand, nobody likes to, you know, have to drive down, scour through clothing for half an hour to an hour, two hours even if you're really, really dedicated and you end up with nothing. But, there's a bright side to this. If you end up with nothing, you're keeping your closet cleaner, you're saving money, you're not buying things that you're not sure about. And I know like probably some of you are gonna be like hung up on the fact that it's super cheap. It adds up, it adds up really fast. I know it's like a $3 shirt or like a $5 shirt, it's gonna add up quickly. Tip number four, go with a friend. Uh, I feel like this one's really important just because when you go to a thrift store, some of you may seem like, think that it's a little bit boring, uh, you will be spending a lot of time there if you actually want to find something nice. You're going to put a lot of clothes, and like a repetitive process. It gets boring, it gets tiring, it gets tedious, so going with a friend is helpful. You can like make jokes about some stuff. You can help each other look for things if you know each other's style. For example, me and Adam, when we went to like a thrift store, he would only look in the large section, I would look in the medium. So at the same time as like keeping each other company, we weren't like, you know, getting in each other's way sort of thing. But yeah. even if you do, even if you do share the same size or the same style or whatever, just like, just share, share everything that you find at the end of it. Wait, share everything? What do you mean by that? Like share everything at the end. Share like what? Split it 50-50? Yeah, That's if fair. It only, only- We're not communists now. <laughs> If one person starts on the side that has like all the new clothing and the other person doesn't, like starts on the other side, 
It's not the other fair. person's an idiot. There's like, there's like at least two visits that we've done that. Okay, fair it's enough. It's like one person didn't find anything, so like the other person kind of pitied and like gave him like the, his least favorite stuff. <laughs> Just go pick out some used underwear, and then when you're done, make sure that you give him the used underwear and say, Oh, here's a find from me to you. That's true friendship. That's true love. Make sure there's like some track marks on there too. <laughs> or make some yourself. <laughs> Tip number five, there's a method to the madness. So understandably for a newcomer or someone who's, you know, going for their second or third time to a thrift store, it is very disheveled, very disorganized. You just walk in, it's like, oh shit, everything's everywhere. It's just thrown, you know, thrown around. But there is a way they organize the store because someone's running the store, they need to know where things are. It's a business. So where I used to work at, Valley Village, remember I was saying previously, in the intro of the video that I am a former employee of a thrift store. It's Value Village. So every aisle is like a long metal rack and then it's divided into like bars. On the right hand side of every one of these bars is where they put all the new stuff. If you're coming to the store and you're strapped for time, you're in there for you know 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you're going before work, you have to go do something after, just go to your section, go to what you're looking for and just check the right hand side of every bar. All the new stuff will be there. Uh, sometimes Obviously it'll get mixed around, but for the most part it stays pretty true to form And even if like you're not like running late or don't have enough time Just always start on the right side. You don't want to be looking first for stuff that's picked out While somebody else is picking out the new stuff. Tip number six. The nicer the area, the nicer the finds I feel like this one's a little bit more of like a common sense one. Thrift stores revolve their business around communities donating clothes to them so they can sell them, right? So if a thrift store is in a nicer community, the people there will have nicer clothing that they'll be donating to it. So if you go into the thrift store, there's going to be nicer clothing inside there. As opposed to that, if you go to a more lower class, lower income area. area, the stuff in there is going to be also a little bit lower. So, and... Sorry for cutting you off. Please, no triggers. When you look at this at face value, it's like high income neighborhoods have all the good clothes, low income neighborhoods have all the bad clothes. End of story. Not really, because people can move back and forth between the two, you know. Yeah. There can be more people going to the high income neighborhoods and it ends up being more picked out than the low income neighborhoods. But on top of that, once again, insider tip from where I used to work, Valley Village or Savers, whatever you want to call it, if the store is not getting enough donations for whatever reason, they will supplement that or subsidize it by sending in donations from other stores. Mm. It's like a second hand, third hand. <laughs> yeah. So you get the third hand donations. They get the third hand helping them. Tip number seven, shop out of season. This is a good tip in general for buying clothes, period, because you'll get good deals. But for thrift stores especially, I find that the sales there are like really crazy. It's like, you know, if it's around fall time and they're trying to get rid of their shorts, Obviously, right? No one's gonna wear shorts in the fall or winter. They'll be like, buy one, get three for free. So it's like all the out of season sales already, plus the markdown of a thrift store on yeah. steroids. If you get um, like an email subscription to like some of the thrift stores, they'll just like send you notifications like a week prior to like their sales. I know that places like Salvation Army and Goodwill, they have like a daily special. So every day you come in, there's a different thing on sale. Tip number eight. Lower your expectations. A lot of people think that when they go to the thrift store, they like see those YouTube videos where they find like those grail pieces, those like crazy insane branded pieces. You're not going to be able to really find that that often. Maybe you will once in like you know a hundred visits, but it's not it's not very common. Just so you don't get kind of let down, don't have high expectations for the first time you go thrifting. I don't want to discourage you from going thrifting, but there is a process to it. You're not always going to be 100% satisfied with your visit. It's very time consuming. If you really want to dedicate your time to it, like we like to sometimes, it's worth it. It is fun when you go with like a friend or something like that, but it's not, it's fun for the reason that you're able to find something nice, but it's not fun for the reason that you will 100% find something nice. You can't go in with that mentality because you're going to be extremely disappointed. Tip numero, I don't know Spanish. No. French. Tip number nine. Okay. Vintage stores and higher end thrift stores do exist. So if you're not willing to sift through with the unwashed masses, you can go to things like vintage stores. Was oh, that funny? Yeah. Unwashed I was masses. thinking about the people there. <laughs> yeah, they are the unwashed masses. Like, come on, come on. I don't want to be mean, but some of the people you see at thrift stores are kind of funny. 
They're like, funny. <laughs> Homeless people with homes. <laughs> so what's going on at these stores is you're paying a higher price for a piece that you could potentially find at a thrift store, but you don't have to go looking for it because you know that this particular higher end thrift store or vintage store will carry something higher quality, right? Or only higher quality goods. So you're paying them to go look for you so you don't have to. And sometimes it'll be a little bit more, sometimes it'll be a lot more. But in general, if you want to save your time, you know, if we had this time saving tip from before where you just go to the right hand side of the, the bar, this is like this way is more, it's like, like, yeah, it's like worlds above. In some areas, I guess the more gentrified parts of bigger cities, vintage and higher end thrift is becoming kind of like a more popular niche. You're seeing more of these stores pop up. For sure. Uh, so, really, it's not that hard to find if you're in a bigger city. Just Google vintage or like top 10 vintage and then like your city's name. But so to put a face to the name of all these stores that we're kind of talking about in this point, Plato's Closet, which I know for a fact they're in the States, and Buffalo Exchange, which we do not have here in Canada, but you have in the States, and I see a lot of people on forums always bragging about the things we find at Buffalo Exchange. I'm so jealous. Like John Elliott pieces for $15. The fuck is up with that? Pretty much, vintage and higher-end thrift do exist. Go look for them. They will serve you tremendously if you have a little bit of extra money to burn, but you still don't want to buy full. You don't want to pay full price. Those are your best friends. Those are our nine tips for thrift. This is a little bit of a different video from what we usually have on the channel. We never had like a discussion, kind of just talking to you guys. So hopefully it went okay. Hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, yeah, thrifting sure. is like an art. It really is. It takes a lot of years of experience to become not even good at it, but just kind of aware of what's going on. So these are just like our unabridged tips that you guys can use to, you know, speed up the process of getting better at it because yeah. we had no one to help us. Peace out, homies. Peace out. Peace out. Support local thrift. Support local thrift. Support local thrift. Support local thrift.